My name is Matt Chester, Community Manager at Energy Central. Energy Central is a platform built to help professionals in the utility industry to share, learn, and connect in a collaborative environment. Our Power Talk series is a short 20 to 30 minute pre-recorded video session designed to bring together some of the leading voices on given topics that we feel are of interest to the power sector widely and of specifically our energycentral.com community members. We invite our members to interact with these Power Talk sessions afterwards by leaving their comments and questions on the posts and then our Power Talk participants uh, will respond to, to those so that the conversation can continue on an ongoing basis. And now I'm pleased to kick off today's Power Talk session with a duo of esteemed guests. This Power Talk series focuses on case studies of projects and implementations across the utility space, identifying what the takeaways, lessons, and forward-looking best practices are for peers in the utility sector to replicate success or avoid pitfalls. So today we're fortunate enough to have two participants as a part of the conversation, uh, from one from the utility side and one from the utility partner perspective. So I'm excited first to welcome Alex Leonakis, electrical engineer at Core Electric uh, Cooperative. Thank you uh, for joining us today, Alex. Thanks, Dan. Great, and, and likewise, I'm excited that we're joined uh, on this Power Talk by Tom Helmer, Executive Solution Architect at UDC Inc. Thank you for being here, Tom. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I've been uh, UDC's uh, you know, Executive Solution Architect for about nine years. Been helping folks with their ADMS roadmaps, business cases, vendor selections for about 15, and have been helping folks with their energy delivery implementations for about the last 30 years. So I've been at this for a while. Wonderful. We're, we're excited to uh, to hear more of your expertise based on all of that experience. Uh, and as I noted, we, we focus these power talks on case studies to make sure that they're grounded in practical learning that can come from them. And in this instance, UDC and CORE recently collaborated to put together an ADMS and D, uh, DERMS roadmap for CORE Electric Cooperative. So Alex, I wanna start with you to see if you can set the stage for us here. What was the background around CORE seeking to put together this type of a roadmap? Thanks, Matt. Yeah, CORE has a history of investing in technology to improve the reliability of the electrical distribution network that we own and operate. Uh, deploying an advanced distribution management system, or ADMS, it's a, a multi-year project requiring cross-discipline coordination uh, and a well-thought-out plan. So this was the main reason we reached out to UDC to develop our roadmap. Uh, we've already invested in advanced metering infrastructure, or AMI smart meters, and substation SCADA. And ADMS is the next stage of building out a fully interconnected electrical distribution system. Great. And so as you started to put together a game plan for this initiative, can you outline what were your main goals that you, you had defined ahead of time and, and how were you in a forward looking way uh, trying to define what a successful end state would end up being? Yeah, our main goal for this initiatives um, were to improve system reliability, safety and interoperability between devices. So we have multiple wildfire mitigation programs in place currently. Um, and we wanted to enhance those programs uh, by offering more technology through ADMS. So our current plan is focused around a lot of traditional methods such as um, enhanced inspection, uh, such as like periodic inspection of overhead lines, vegetation management, um, like proactive and reliability-based trimming of vegetation uh, in the vicinity of overhead lines, and system hardening efforts, uh, such as insulated conductors, uh, replacement of hydraulic reclosers, and, and we're experimenting with non-expulsion fuses as well. So um, getting into some of the benefits of ADMS, uh, the safety benefits for wildfire prevention would be improved system visibility. So by installing sensors along power lines, we'll be able to monitor system conditions uh, at a more granular level, which will allow us to identify and locate faults more rapidly. Now, in addition to that, from an interoperability perspective, being able to interface with loads and generation will further enable us to effectively manage our system. 
Great. And it, it sounds like so you had everything very well well defined at the beginning. And and so Tom, I'd like to bring you in at this part of the conversation. You know, where did UDC become involved and and from your perspective, what did you see as the main challenges of the project from the beginning? Um, yeah, uh, Alex reached out to UDC uh, because of a longtime colleague of mine actually was helping them with some of their AMI MDMS deployment. Uh, probably the first challenge always is to have Alex uh, and, their, and our clients understand our methodology. And we really need to get more than just operations involved. So we, we try to get a number of lines of businesses that are going to get value either from the data, the processing, or historically potentially from the data as well. So getting that large group together is a big challenge. Uh, and then the other piece was we started a little bit late uh, in the year, calendar year, and we wanted to get it done in the calendar year. So Alex and team did a great job getting the business centric, you know, workshops all scheduled in a timely fashion, well attended, so we could actually get the roadmap completed by the year end. Thanks. Excellent. Yeah. And, and Alex, as you listen to that, were there any additional challenges that you saw from the core side? You know, Tom basically laid it out uh, very well, and, and, and to Tom's point about being in a time crunch, he was uh, really proactive in getting uh, these workshops scheduled and coordinated, uh, and very flexible too, because obviously we're trying to pull together multiple team members from different departments, and so there were a lot of scheduling constraints around that. And so Tom's workshops were essential for bringing together those different departments across our organization. And since ADMS is a system of systems that will impact our entire company, it was very beneficial to hold those workshops. Uh, and Tom led those workshops in a way to get everyone on the same page to make sure all stakeholders had a say. Right, and it sounds like, so everything was very well planned from the beginning, but now let's shift to walking through the actual process of developing the roadmap. And, and I'd obviously love to hear from both of you on this, but maybe we'll start with Tom. Uh, do you want to give um, you know a, an overview for how you approach this to kick it off from your you know the outside vendor perspective? Sure, um, I've had the pleasure of helping people, like I said, for about 15 years now. So our methodology for doing these is is pretty well tuned. Uh, we like to do kind of an introduction of what's commercially available today, right, from the ADMS and Derm space, and I like to get the clients to tell me either their vernacular or for them to understand mine, because before we start the workshops, it's really important that we're on the same page uh, from a terminology point of view and an expectation point of view, right? Because there's a lot of applications now that are being developed and we want to make sure that we have a good inventory of them all and we can go through and uh, get a good priority in terms of uh, things that are human in the loop usually come first things that are semi-automated or could have a human in the loop are usually second and then things that are fully automated fully optimized issuing SCADA commands based on the results that usually is coming in uh, last in our in our ordering so as we go through and do these workshops and again they're very business centric uh, we try to put them in the nomenclature of you know, or using their business systems, using their swim lanes, and showing the high value integrations that are needed, right, to get the full value out of ADMS and DERMS. Uh, so that's kind of what we, uh, as we go through and, and build out the uh, deployment plan or uh, roadmap, uh, we call them business releases. And based on CORE's priorities uh, and ability to adapt change, we came up with eight business releases uh, currently is, is the game plan. So we're very pragmatic. Uh, the first four are turning on ADMS functionality. Uh, the next one will turn on DERMS. Uh, the, the fifth, the next one after that is kind of optional. If, if DERMS brings together everything they really want, a demand side or demand response point of view, probably don't need it, but I uh, did put in another uh, business release just because DRMS vendors and DERMS vendors aren't quite the same. I mean, I know they're kind of merging, but I wanted to make sure based on using the systems 
uh, have some timing in the schedule to make sure we can adopt uh, more customer demand response if that's you know the goal. And then, then the last two are really taking advantage of all that great data now that they're collecting and use it in more of an advanced asset management point of view to help manage their you know their modern grid a bit better as well. Thanks. Great, yeah, thanks for that, Tom. And now, now, Alex, how, from your perspective, how did you and your team manage the process and ensure the project continued to move along towards your desired outcomes? Yeah, as Tom mentioned, um, we we just completed this roadmap at the end of last year, so we are in business release one right now and looking ahead at all those future business releases. And to get to this point, um, the uh, the communication between departments within core was essential to ensure that all stake stakeholders had a chance to participate in the development of that roadmap uh, and stakeholders across different departments within core uh, were involved in the development of the roadmap. We were also aware that many other utilities are much further along in the process of developing their ADMS platforms and might be willing to share their experiences and lessons learned. And Tom was really helpful in getting us in contact with um, former clients and other industry contacts he had in the utility world uh, to, to have those conversations. And I learned a lot in these discussions with people from their previous experiences. Uh, for example, when selecting a software vendor, uh, I learned that we need to confirm the vendor's product development roadmap aligns with the goals of our, our internal roadmap for ADMS. There might be uh, functionality that we plan to, to implement that may not align with a, a certain vendor, which could cause problems. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and you mentioned lessons learned. And, and so I kind of want to you know, keep on that theme and, and see, you know, were there any particular roadblocks that came up that were unexpected that, that you didn't see coming based on previous experience or other uh, examples you had seen? And, and I'd love to open this up to either of you to share uh, any of your perspectives about whether, you know, the challenges that you did come across these roadblocks, were they unique to how CORE operates as an electric cooperative or were they, you know, comparable to what you would expect another uh, form of utility might come across? Yeah, you know, um, I think it, it's probably common because even though we're, there's some common problems, even though we're sort of deep into it as an industry, uh, that the technology has matured a bit from what Tom has told me from where it was, say, 10 years ago. Uh, I think still one of the main challenges a lot of people in in my similar position might encounter is uh, personally was a lack of knowledge of the complexity of implementing an ADMS um, just based on my background, I tended to think of it uh, primarily from a hardware level. And I didn't have an appreciation of the complexities around modeling, uh, the software implementation, the data, the quantity of data involved, and the business impacts involved, right? Because it is a cross-organization system. Um, so there's business impacts. Fortunately, Core is committed to developing a realistic roadmap and has been very supportive of this project. So they've given me the opportunity to learn and put me in contact with people like Tom to help support the, the program in general. Yeah, I would say I didn't really hit any roadblocks at CORE. I would almost say it was probably the opposite. Uh, they had deployed already a very nice OMS system that has grown into an ADMS uh, system. Uh, the vendor has been bought and the new ownership actually is really progressive. They're actually issuing a release a month to catch up and they really want to be a leader in functionality. So in, in previous vendor evals, they were a bit slow, maybe two or three years on releases. And now they're coming up with functionality pretty much every month uh, to the market. So it's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, from a pragmatic point of view, this allows Core to turn on modules as they want because the model build process is in place. Uh, that way it may highlight there may be data missing, right? Right now, the model build process is designed to feed outage prediction and generate uh, customer accounts. Uh, being able to do unbalanced load flows a lot needs a lot more data. So we'll see if you know that information is existing. 
in the enterprise systems at core, but just gives them a nice sandbox to turn on functionality. And from a user experience, it's going to be the same user interface. So in the app center, it should be very well adopted and used as modules get turned on. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and Tom, I, I like hearing you say that they have the sandbox now and, you know, kind of bleeds into my next question, which is, it sounds like, you know, there's been fairly successful outcomes from this this endeavor, but I have to imagine that it's not the end of the process completely and it's kind of more or less just the beginning. So Alex, I'd love if you could share, you know, what really comes next from here. Yeah, and you're right, Matt. It is really just the beginning for us. Um, we expect many challenges to come. Um, from what we've learned through the road mapping process. So there'll be technical, logistical, economic, supply chain, uh, the, the whole gamut of challenges, right? Uh, one of the first technical challenges we'll be working on is the creation of an electrical model for our distribution system. So we have existing electrical models we use for planning processes, but there'll be a new model that's gonna be foundational to our fully optimized ADMS uh, based on our GIS model, so what they might call a utility network model. Uh, I guess most utilities probably don't have this level of, of, of electrical modeling of their system. So creating an accurate electrical model, is it's a large task in itself uh, that involves taking a detailed inventory of all overcurrent devices, regulators, reclosers, conductors on your system. Uh, once that data is collected, um, we have, uh, excuse me, once this data collection is completed, uh, that we need to implement systems and processes uh, to maintain the accuracy of that model, right, as the system grows and changes. Uh, these changes will need to flow through uh, different departments, such as engineering, GIS, operations, and finally, into an ADMS system and the components of that system, such as unbalanced load flow. It's a coordinated effort that requires quite a bit of planning to execute properly. Yeah. Other processes that are running concurrently to the electrical model development are lab testing of field hardware, such as mesh radios, cellular radios, and line sensors, um, uh, which are the networking paths that constitute our OT network. We're also working with our IT department to create a network architecture to support integration of these new systems while maintaining appropriate separation between uh, NERC SIP security perimeters and this new OT environment. Excellent. Well, Tom and Alex, this, this has been a great power talk session, and it's so compelling to hear the perspective you each have from a slightly different vantage point in this process. So I'm sure the Energy Central community will have further questions that they wish I had asked you guys. So if that's the case, I'll again encourage them to post them in the comments on Energy Central's Power Talk post. And I know both of you will be open to keeping that conversation going with them. Uh, but once again, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Matt. Uh, it definitely has been a pleasure working with a client as progressive as Core is. And I look forward to helping them implement, hopefully, some of their business releases. And again, thank Energy Central for having me on this Power Talk. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thanks for having us on. And thanks again, Tom, for your support through this process. Yep. Thank you. Wonderful. And, and thanks, last, uh, lastly, to all those who are watching or listening in. And stay tuned for future editions of the Energy, Talk, Energy Central Power Talk series as well. <laughs>